Hello everyone, this is Alejandro and in this tutorial we will see how we can use the new depth of field effects on a spline to achieve different type of camera blurs so you can create more photorealistic scenes when you're using a spline. Alright, let's begin. Alright, so I have my scene here open and the next step is just to enable the effects panel. As soon as I do that, you will see that there are many options for effects that you can enable on a spline. The one that I want to focus on is the first one, which is Dove, and the way to enable this is just by clicking here on the eye icon. As soon as you do this, you will notice that everything becomes blurry. This is because we currently don't have any focus area. So in order to define a focus area, you just need to click on the settings icon, and then on where it says focus distance, you can just click on the cross icon, and then you can hover the object where you want to focus on. And you can see here that I can focus on that, I can focus on that. So let's click on the card now. So now the blur is actually happening on the far and on the near distance. And if you want to change that, you can just keep moving this around and you'll see how the blur is going to move around the distance. Now, the dot parameter indicates how shallow or wide is this distance between blurriness and sharpness. So if I change that distance to be more shallow, you will see that the, there is a very thin line between the blur and the sharpness. So let's put that back again, somewhere around there. The next is the blur itself. So the blur is the value that controls how much of blur do you want this scene to be. So if I reduce the blur to zero, there will not be any blur. If I increase it to 20 or even more than 20, you will see like how everything becomes really, really blurry. Very high levels of blur are not really realistic for this scene. So I just want to keep it in 20, which is fine. And then the dot in 18 and the focus systems, I guess it's just fine the way it is right now. Now, if you hold up option and you orbit, you will see that the blur is going to stay the way in the same way. In fact, you can see how it looks when you look like this, which is really, really cool. Right now I'm using an orthographic camera, which is slightly different from a perspective camera. So if I switch back to a perspective camera, you will see that the, the blur is now different because the camera in perspective is by default a little more um, close to the object. So now I just need to zoom out a little bit and then I can just adjust my focus in here. Now the blur is happening the way I expected to. Maybe I can decrease a little bit because I'm closer maybe I can adjust this just a little more. Well, I would like to see how the depth of field effect works on this scene. So I'm just going to go to effects and then I will disable vignette, will disable balloon. I just want to focus on the dot for now. So by default, everything is very blur. Um, so I'm just going to focus on the objects in the middle. I already see something very interesting happening. Now I want to disable the grid because I don't need that. And let's increase the blur a little bit. Now maybe let's reduce this and maybe focus a little more around here. So you can see the same scene as before. Now it feels a lot more interesting just because we're focusing our vision right in the middle of the scene in here. Here's another scene that I believe adding depth of field will make it look more shiny and interesting. Let's see, I already have the setup for the depth of field, so I just want to show you how it looks like. So here's how it looks now, and here's with the depth of field. Now we're focused on a particular letter instead of the whole composition. And if I rotate around, you can see it's almost like if I'm looking through um, a camera lens and I'm getting very close to the object. And it gets even more interesting if you change the focus to be maybe in different letters, so now you see that kind of like blur um, enabling you to focus on a particular part of this object. Here's another example of one scene that can benefit from this. If you go to a play mode on this scene, it looks like this very interesting, very small, tiny playground. Now let's see what happens if we enable the depth of field. So let's go to a play mode. That is so interesting. Right out of the box, it will look very, very interesting because this playground is supposed to be like a tiny playground 
and now it kind of looks like it's like a lot more real. This is also a very good example of how the depth of field can really make your scene look different. So this is how this scene looks right now. There's nothing wrong about it. It's really nice. Um, you can see there's different objects. Um, in general, it's a pretty scene. But um, now let's see how it looks with the depth of field, right? So that is so strikingly different. Um, everything looks a lot more realistic. It feels like you're taking a picture with your camera. And when you move around, it feels really magical. The fact that the focus is happening just around this front part of the house and then everything gets blurry. Um, once again, this is one of the most uh, magical experiences when using these type of effects on, on your scene. You can really make something shine. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you like this content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.